Hey everyone, Dave here, and I am back at the camp. Welcome to another bushcraft camp episode of me building this kind of structure in the middle of the forest. So what am I going to be focusing on today with today's uh, bushcraft camp episode is putting roof poles on top and putting some support. I'm gonna be building uh, more triangles like some uh, subscribers have suggested, um, you know, reinforcing the frame. And it's gonna be a lot of pole work today. Today is like a rain day for me. That's why I'm not working and working on the bushcraft camp. So it rained in the morning and I can feel some raindrops already. Um, it might get wet today. So we'll see how the filming goes. Also today I'm going to be featuring um, a new gift basically. This is a Gawa Canyon Boreal 21. Um, they contacted me and asked me if I wanted to take a look at their saw. So whether or not they saw me like with my silky and they, <laughs> they wanted to throw me this, I don't know. But um, anyways, I will be demonstrating this guy as well as the Zubat. And I think that's gonna be a super awesome saw shootout video in the future because uh, for me, they're kind of like, I was between the two and I went silky. So now that I have this in my hand, we'll see how it actually performs. So um, today I'm gonna be using both saws in building the roof structure and basically gonna be collecting a bunch of poles and getting as much as done as I can today on the bushcraft shelter before the weather gets crazy. So let's get to it. So what I wanna do with the basically reinforcing the structure to make it a little less, it's not that it's wobbly, but it does need some triangles in this structure. So I'm gonna be going across this way down there with, with one long pole. And then we're probably gonna do a few, let me try to get you. I don't know how to get it, a few going this way here um, in the corner of the structure so that it, it is basically a little more stable. And then when I do put the roof poles on top there, uh, it will be a little less wiggling. So what I'm looking for for my roof poles is I'm actually looking for more of like the tops of dead standing wood that are fairly straight. I don't want them too thick, like I don't want to be putting unnecessarily amount of weight on top. Um, I just want to put, you know, you know, a couple inches, maybe three inches max, which might be like the length of my ring finger, not the middle finger. <laughs> but that's kind of the idea. You don't really want to be going too heavy on top. There's no reason for it. So it would be better to kind of do two layers of like, like thinner stuff than it would be to like pile on top, you know, some big logs. So that's the dead standing wood that I'm looking for, which we have right here. And I think we'll just whip out the Boreal 21. Never been used. Still getting used to how this thing kind of like folds out. And it's got like a crazy loud snap to it. <laughs> so there's the, uh, the Boreal 21. If we pull out the Zubat, you can see that the, the boreal is quite a bit larger. So anyways, we'll be felling this dead standing tree. Perfect. Well, I think I found where the majority of my roof poles are coming from.
So right now I'm just kind of trying to see how the poles work on top of the roof there. I still haven't done any of the uh, support things like what I was talking about, like that diagonal supports, but I really wanted to do just most of the hustling and get it all my roof poles ready. So uh, I just don't run out of time because today is all about work and like getting some stuff done while I have the opportunity. And that's kind of the reason why I'm using my Silky right now instead of the uh, Boreal 21. And it's just because I can, it's on my belt and it's a little bit thinner. It's easier to, when I'm felling those, you know, when it was a tangled mess in there, it was just the easier saw to be doing that stuff with. So that was the main reason why, you know, I'm using the Silky right now. So, um, yeah. So let's throw some on, see how they do. While putting them on here, I'm rotating them from like thick to thin for at the tops and the bottom. So in my mind, it will just join better that way than just putting all the heavy thick ends at the bottom and the light ends at the top. They'll be a little bit more straight. All right, so there we go. Finally managed to get all the poles for the roof and that took a really long time. You know, there's probably like 30 something poles up there, I wanna say. And that was a hustle to be able to try to get all that done. So right now I'm gonna take a pause on the bushcraft camp and I think I'll do all like the triangular support stuff that I was talking about a little bit later and I'm gonna dive into some camp cooking. So I'm gonna do that on a separate video. I thought it'd be kind of fun to do that, you know, ha come up here and do some bushcraft camp building and then do like a cooking video at the same time because uh, I need to eat when I'm out here for like, <laughs> like five hours and um, this kind of, those videos are fun to do. So check out that one. That one will be coming up after I release uh, the bushcraft camp videos. So I'm going to go eat and then we're going to get back to it. I'm starting to run out of time to keep working on the camp here. It's getting kind of late. It's getting dusk. I got to hike out still a little bit. But uh, you know, it went really well today. I did a lot of work just getting those poles. Like it takes a long time to cut down that many poles. You know, there's there's a, quite a few of them up there if you can see in the background. But um, I did do some camp cooking, you know, just like I did before. I think that'll be a theme, you know, I'll come out here and build and then I'll just release a cooking video. And just, you know, it, it just makes a little bit more content for the channel, makes it a little fun, makes a good series. And then I get to come up with ideas about cooking because uh, I like cooking on the campfire, it's fun. Let's do a little walk around of the, uh, the structure here. So if I walk underneath, you can see I got good headroom up front. Walk around. So we're walking towards the back now, backside. This is like the lean-to pole. I might change this pole out. I feel like it's a bit small, but uh, I'll figure that out later. So back here, I have the idea of when I do the lean-to, you know, the, the poles are going to come up to about here. So there's ventilation kind of out here for when the fire, because I do want to like kind of close off this area. So even when I'm at the very back of my shelter, I'm just head height right here. It's pretty good. You know, I can easily stand up straight. And that's exactly what I wanted was to be able to have a roof over my head around the fire pit that was more than head height all the way through. I really do need to put some cross beams to add a little bit more support because there's a, quite a bit of weight with all those uh, pulls on top. And those tri triangular, diagonal, whatever you want to call them supports, they need to go on there too just to prevent a little wiggling, you know, that sort of stuff going on. But it was a very successful day for me, super stoked. It's, you know, it's starting to look like a camp. I can say that it's, it's, it's not just a image in my head, an idea on paper, because I've like drawn it out. Uh, you know, draw, I draw a lot of my ideas 
it's finally becoming reality, which is very exciting for me. I, it's really fun when you have like a vision in your mind and you are actually able to start like implementing it into the real world. And this was something that I've had like in my head, something that was possible to do, a camp that, you know, had, uh, was fully supported by itself. You didn't have to tie it to trees that had a roof over it, you know, and had, uh, it was a natural roof on top. So those are the goals for this camp. So stay tuned for more. I know that this video was not as, you know, exciting because it was just a lot of sawing for me. <laughs> it might actually be a short video, <laughs> but keep walking around and yeah, it's going to be cool. As far as the Boreal 21, we do have to address that because I actually didn't use it very much in this video, even though I brought it and I pretty much did the first cut with it. The main reasons were is that the, the silky Zubat is smaller, it's easier to get in when it's really tangled, and it, it was easier to bring around because it's on my belt. And so today I had my axe on my belt and my saw on my belt, I had everything on my belt and I, was, I felt fine. I was actually able to walk around the woods very easily like that. Um, the system worked, it's starting to work. I feel comfortable with the Zubat on my, my left hip. I was complaining about that before. Uh, it feels like a sword, you're kind of drawing out a sword now. So it, it's, it's working there for sure. But as far as the Boreal 21 goes, it, it just didn't really like slide into my groove. Uh, not that it's not a good saw, but like um, it has a lot more width to it, the whole unit. So when you, the trees are tight, it's hard to get it in there. And I, when, when I did like fall a tree, um, you know, you end up having to find a place to hang it. And then when you're using the axe, like, whereas the Zubat, you could just put, slide it into your sheath and it's on you. And I'm notorious for just leaving things. So like, I would just, I could easily just leave the saw and then have to go back and get it. It's not that it's not a good saw. It's just some things I've noticed with it. Uh, as far as like how it cuts t uh, compared to the Zubat, I, I can't really tell which one is the best yet. Um, I have a feeling which one is the best, but I do need to kind of like review it on video and that's going to be for a separate saw shootout video where I'll just put these guys head to head and we'll, we'll see which one is the winner. But I do really appreciate Agawa Canyon actually sending me the saw. I was, I was quite shocked to have an email saying like, hey, we want to like send it, see how you how you feel. And it's it's a really like intuitive design. It's very cool. The biggest thing that I like about it is like replace, replacing the blades where like the Zubat, that's the one drawback is like blade replacement is going to be terrible. It, you might as well just buy a new saw, that sort of stuff. Like it's where the Agawa Canyon, you can actually bring blades with you if you break them. And depending on what type of trip that you're going on, that might be more important to you than um, the things that uh, I found today. So. Um, I'm definitely not ruling off that saw. I do really like it. It's something that's very cool and unique and I, I think it has its place in bushcraft for sure. Um, I'm not sure where it's going to fit into my kit, especially with this bushcraft camp build. It might honestly just be processing firewood up for me instead of um, doing the stuff that I'm doing because the Zubat was just, it just has the, the, the things that I explained um, and made it easier for me to be using on the regular. Anyways, I have rambled far long enough. That's it for this video. Stay tuned for the next Bushcraft Camp video. I'm trying to get out here weekly. It's very hard for me to do that and it requires a lot of time to build this stuff. So this is basically a whole day of my life <laughs> doing this out here. So um, I'm trying and I wanna make this thing look freaking cool. And I want it to be an awesome camp to chill at. So until the next video, I hope you guys have a great day. This is Dave from BC Bushcraft. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.